Welcome back everyone to Red Desk. I'm your host, Mr. Michael Lover. And right now we are going to talk about a twist of fate. As a nation anxiously await the results of the recent election for 2005, or 2004 elections really, none of the candidates secured this crucial 270 electoral votes needed for a victory. In this unprecedented scenario, the decision is now in the hands of the House of Representatives. The lower chamber now holds the key to the presidency, with each state delegation having one crucial vote. The anticipation is palpable and the Speaker of the House addresses the press the declared outcome. After a thorough debate and impassioned debate, uh, I stand before you to announce that the House of Representatives has reached a decision in this unpre unprecedented situation. Where there no candidates secured the requisite 270 electoral votes, the House has fulfilled its constitutional duty and declared the candidates as the President elect of the United States is from. Honestly, uh, so we'll just probably go with the reformist still, just because we can. Um, see if a mouse spent in this party's performance in the election. So, uh, yeah, is he up here? 203 Democrat. Uh, Electoral votes versus 204, literally one vote away from the Reformist Party, and then the Republicans exist. So it's a pretty solid South again. I mean, it's very interesting. I mean, the Democrats got parts of New England. We actually we got New England. The Democrats got California, the Pacific Coast, basically, minus Alaska, um, Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, and whatnot, and probably Delaware or whatever, and Michigan, Illinois, Wisconsin. The Republicans got the solid South and some uh, Western states, and then we got. The middle, literally the in between and New England. So Florida, Ohio, Texas. This one was heck of a campaign. Literally one vote away uh, from how much the Democrats got. So, but we're doing the Prisoner Rehabilitation Act, um, like we saw, talked about last time for humanism. I just wanted to really, really like Donald Trump because I usually like having two term presidencies. So, uh, but now we're out of political power and whatnot. So, give Korea some things here too. Also, we were losing pretty badly. We're actually getting pushed back. Uh, we're trying to throw in more guys here. Close air support wings. Come on, leave. Oh, that's good. Because they have a, just a ton of planes. And it's almost impossible for us to catch up with them. Oh, that's not good too. Uh, what are you doing? How are you not in Virginia already? Bro. One, two, three, four. Go here. That should help us out a little bit more. Um, I can send two more fighter things, two more wings. And we're going to continue to kick the commies out, so we're going with that and we're going to expand our drone department and see what happens from there. Um, we're still in Afghanistan dealing with all the crap over there and we have no political power. Actually, we're losing political power every single day, wow. Globalized economy is good. And human sweatshops. We love human sweatshops. Actually, is the other one better? Well, I don't want automated factories. I don't want to lo lose construction speed. Alright, so much rubber do we have now? Oh, basically the same amount. <laughs> when we started with that. Okay. Interesting take. I'm literally just doing this for the rubber. Oh, uh, that's the okay. case. So you guys come up here. Repair. Repair. What's the repair key? Oh, nothing. Okay. Ah, yeah, the bell passes. Good job, everybody. A little more stability never hurt us. Well, <coughs> we did whatever reforms we could. We didn't ever get medical marijuana, but you can't pass everything in every single term you have, so. Village stabilization, sending coalition forces, that'd be nice. Stay up standard conditions, but what else is new? Arm is getting better. That's good to see. Uh, they are still slowly pushing us in, which is not ideal. Which means I'm going to do some funky stuff here, because I'm sick and tired of this. And we should be able to just literally just decimate the Air Force. I mean, they're dropping like crazy constantly. Which is great, don't get me wrong. Happy 2004, though, everybody. Alright. You're gone. Two more, huh? I think two more will definitely help us out. Uh, you know what? Yeah. And I guess you guys have some slight close air support division uh, capabilities, perhaps. Do you have any more experience yet? No. Uh, our guys are getting pretty, 
pretty weak here, which is not ideal. Got more than enough tanks and whatnot. Mm. Night raids. U.S. elections on December 15th only. Eagle's wings, which we read last time. Battleship focus. Submarine focus. Naval damage, nighttime attack. Force of nature. Well, as much as I want to do these, battleship focus. Our funds have been directed to our battleship class ships. Much to the benefit of our top admirals and naval staff who see battleships as the next big tool in naval warfare. If we should properly break the needs of the Chinese and Soviet navies if we ever go to war with them, battleships will be the absolute bunker breakers in that regard. These new funds will go into better battleship strengthening, the use of new weapons, and the increased production and the use of battleships in the long run. Well, you know what? Screw it. No. Actually, I want submarines. It seems that we've chosen this course of increased funding to our sub department, much to the benefit of, benefit of our underwater fleet. With these new funds, our sub fleet will experience a new age of better engineering, combat adaptability, and most importantly, better technologies. A large part of our new funds will be directed to our naval and military research, be focused on submarines. They'll be pushing our understanding and use of sub in a new age, right under their noses. The last thing enemy suspects when they see the navy heading straight towards them on the water is that a whole other navy is right under below them in the water, and that's exactly what we'll pounce on. Our sub fleet will consist of a vast network spanning thousands of miles as black shells of steel, sneak right past enemy lines and induce chaos and confusion when the time to strike finally arrives and the eagle's beak. Like an eagle swooping in, snatching upon its prey, and devouring it bit by bit with its beak, our navy must be able to swoop in and power properly de destroy the enemy. Whether it be in the icy Pacific North, the humid Black Sea, or off the coast of East Asia, our naval power will be insurmountable. Our naval dominance uh, shall be secured forevermore, as our brave sailors guide the vessels of freedom across the seven seas. EATO victory in the Great Asian War. Who could have seen that one coming? The Republic of Korea has issued a global statement declaring that the last North Korean and Chinese force have been pushed out of the peninsula and across the Yula River. The PRC has announced a ceasefire with EATO forces beginning of peace talks with all PLA and PLAM units withdrawing and the North Korean region being placed under EATO supervision. Much of the Western world is in celebration in the wake of the victory, with the U.S. and other NATO allies issuing statements and congratulations and the willingness to help in the reconstruction of the Korean Peninsula. The EATO has declared its intentions to establish a U.N. commission to better integrate and heal the North and to further the creation of a full United Korea. The Pacific is saved. Would we'll you look at that? Uh, do we still have to do with, uh, oh, the Nationals take over Japan? Oh, well, I guess, no, the Nationals aren't taking over Japan now. Liberals, also, I did forget about our economy here, so we got a little more socialists. Gus Hall? Really communist? Sterling Travis, we've got Patrick Magruder, an anarchist. Robbing Nationalist is Louis Barstow. Benjamin Lee is a paternal autocrat, and so, um, I've read these before, so if you want to read about the crisis, please go right ahead. Boop! Because he did that one. And Donald Trump will talk to the public, you know? There's no need to be hot headed against poor citizens who lost their livelihood. I'm going to do a PR campaign. Don't worry, the government's here for you. Oh, the Pope passes away, not good. <clears throat> and then we're going to compensate the public, you know? Oh, okay, so we got rid of that one war, now the Great Middle Eastern War. UN mandate of North Korea. After a, a few weeks, after the collapse of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, and the complete <coughs> withdrawal of Chinese troops, uh, uh, the UN command established a trans uh, transitional authority under the United Nations and North Korea. The decision was made with the aim of easing the burden on the armed forces of the Republic of Korea after substantial losses from the reunification war. Currently, the EATO, the United States, and their allies have committed to sending peacekeeping forces to stabilize the territory and counter the stubborn communist forces to engage in guerrilla warfare. The United States, or <coughs> nations, representatives emphasize that the transitional authority is temporary and plans for elections to unify the Korean Peninsula will be initiated as soon as possible. There will be no war repeated on the Korean Peninsula. Line of the pump at the local gas station. Tensions crackle like static. Electricity's drivers jostled and argued over dwindling supply. Emily gripped the steering oh, wheel tightly. Her knuckles wide as she watched a heated debate unfold between two frustrated motorists. I've been here waiting for 30 minutes, shouted a middle aged man, his face with, uh, red with irritation. The old woman at the front of the line snapped back. I was here first, I need to get back to work. They were sick with impatience and anxiety as people uh, filled their tanks, knowing that every drop of gas was a precious commodity in the wake of soaring prices. Emily glanced at her watch, her anxiety mounting. She realized she might not make it to her daughter's soccer game. The once routine task of filling up had turned into a battleground of frustration and urgency, reflecting the broader chaos grip in the country. As the argument, as the argument continued, Emily sat and tried to focus on the task at hand, her sense of helplessness growing with every passing minute. When the tanks run dry, so does the patience of the people. Oh, great. Petroleum panic. So, the war raging in the Middle East has caused a significant drop in oil supply, leading to a dramatic rise in oil prices across the country. Our economy is facing severe strain with increased costs impacting transportation, manufacturing, and everyday life for all Americans. We must take decisive action to mitigate this crisis, stabilize the oil prices, and secure our energy future. 
we can turn our strategic petroleum reserve of auto safeguard established in the 70s to protect us from such crises. It currently holds about 750 million barrels of oil. Average price is critically high. Effects from the current average oil price make a lot of less stability and construction speed release a small amount. Release oil from the strategic petroleum reserve to temporarily alleviate shortages and stabilize domestic prices in months. Crisis ends. By maintaining standard oil price for two months, the crisis will be over. Rising prices. As the conflict in the Middle East continues, the pressure on global oil supply chains across the world increases. The results in gradually persistent rising oil prices, exacerbating the economic strain in the country. So if we do this one, what happens? It increases by 5 million barrels, 60 days, more weekly stability, lose political power. When we remove the average of oil, decreases slightly. Alright, we can do that a little bit first, see what happens. Um, we've got to do PR campaigns too to get more political power back too, because it was destroying us here. I got more research to do too. All right, we'll do this later too. But whatever. Not raids, car narcotics. Um, we don't have a lot of political power. I really want to use all that political power. Uh, but we got got to continue working on these guys too. Yeah. Islamic Republic of Iraq. Islamic Axis. Well, I don't think their allies are very strong after Iraq just took them over. So. Oh, develop new oil fields in Texas. Invest in the exploration. Develop new oil fields in Texas. Significantly boost domestic oil production capabilities. Heck yeah. Texas gets 150 more oil. <sighs> Change poverty population to the following states in the next election. Texas will only become more purple. And California? Oh, yeah. Arctic reserves. Oh, we can only do three at a time. Well, that sucks. There, have some guns. Poland, we love you. Have guns. Just take them. Or pay off our debt. Or become part of the new debt. They could also work too. Look at this. Their fighters, nice. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, let's see what happens. Bomb Taliban kit, you bet we are. We don't have any oil, but we'll put it in our military vehicles to bomb, bomb some Middle Easterners. Gotta love being American. And then compensate the public, which is going to hurt political power again, but whatever. And wait it out. Because we have phase two. That's why I also chose uh, the reformist path, because I wanted to go like full reformist. Because we could get, could get Jeb Bush, but I mean, there's only so much fun you can have with Jeb Bush. Donald Trumper? Uh, there's probably more fun with him. Maybe. Especially in 2000 Donald Trump. So, compensate the public. Um, so, it could be worse. Could stop spreading all these ill ill diseases whatnot. 33%, 18%, 19%. It really destroyed the Democrats and the Republicans here doing that. Combined they're still bigger than us, but still. Um. Continue to destroy them. Still substandard, huh? Trading for proficiency. You know what? We're gonna keep you training still too, because we still need more army XP and whatnot. So, hey, very nice. It's critically high, not ideal. Wait it out. Uh, the global supply chain disruption national sphere will be removed when the war in Asia ends. Oh, look at the assets first. They fill up our cash reserves. Oh, you know what? I'll do phase two first. I want more political power. This time, the promises made are very different from those of the last time. But they're the same purpose, that is, to serve the people in the nation as best as possible, and especially increasing the standard of life. The majority of the left's agenda in this term revolves around the support of the workers or that of the popular masses. So, in this case, we can either do serve the people, implement universal health care, Misdirected foreign policy with humble foreign policy, which will help us out. Or, adhere to the working class. Expand workers' rights. Bread and roses. Which, standing economy. 
I don't want to lose any more political power, but this makes more of a sense, of, in my opinion, to figure out what Donald Trump would take with it here to the working class. Small release. Oh, we have no civvies, huh? Bruh. Well, at least we're making political power again. It's better. Oh, oh Xinjiang counterterrorist operations fail. Well then. Well then. Oh, they destroyed him anyways. Oh, okay, so we have no more civvies, huh? Nope. Oh. A new course. As mentioned before, the left has a myriad of aspirations all aimed at satisfying the people in the working class, but to do everyone's well, you need funds and a lot of that. For the left is at a crossroads, at a new crossroads, of course that is. You must make the final decision uh, to spend this term dealing with the workers or the standard of living uh, with the people. Um, I'm going to look at the assets first, because we need those consumer goods right now. Hey, good job. A resolution is being presented in the North Atlantic Council. Belgian delegation for presenting a resolution titled Fortify NATO Eastern Flank to the North Atlantic Council. Must determine a voting stance on this resolution within the next three weeks. Thanks for the update. Denmark's like, no. So, the proposed construction of fortified defenses along NATO's eastern flank is a critical response to the renewed Soviet aggression in the former SSRs of the Baltics and Caucasus, signaling a clear threat to the alliance's security. Spanning the Norwegian border in the north to Turkey and the Caucasus and Germany's border with Poland, this initiative concludes modernized bunkers and advanced surveillance systems, reinforcing NATO's deterrence capabilities across its most vulnerable regions. A specter of Soviet expansion looms once again. This resolution is a decisive step in fortifying the alliance frontier. Oh crap, come on, Taliban. Um, and ensuring the stability of Europe. Oh, okay. Oh, oh we're gonna vote yes. Conduct joint NATO exercises. I forgot about all this stuff. Counter isolation elements. Oh, there you go. I have a feeling yes is gonna win overall. Eighteen percent backup. Come on. And alleviate trade partners. If anything, this crisis has shown us that over reliance on a single country will only lead to the economy being left on a weak spot. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, Saudi Arabia's no longer doing well, huh? Well, we prefer the Saudis do well. But if they go to war with Israel, oh, that's going to be a big problem. Sieg Zion. Bomb those caves, y'all. Not ideal. Still critically high, not ideal. Do we have any cities? None at all. Wow. Road to recovery. Though it's a long way until years to recover. Oh, so the invasion of Eastern Europe. Look at that. Um, uh, we have taken the necessary steps to begin the process now. Yeah. Uh, Belgian delegates, have, Belgians again, have decided to say. Proposed a resolution to our intervention in Eastern Europe to the North Atlantic Council once again. So, okay. Um, so, 
We stand at historic crossroads as we confront the unprovoked Soviet invasion of Poland, Slovakia, Romania, Bulgaria, and Hungary. Nations once liberated from the iron grip of the Warsaw Pact. In response to this blatant aggression, a resolution has been brought forth calling for decisive NATO intervention to protect the sovereignty and freedom of Eastern Europe. This is not merely a defense of borders, but a defense of the democratic values and liberties that our alliance was founded upon. The respect of communism, though to be banished to history, has returned with force. We must now unite to ensure it is not darkening Europe's skies once more. At this moment, our resolve will determine whether the light of liberty continues to shine in Eastern Europe or whether it's extinguished by tyranny. Uh, the American century, century reconsidered. <coughs> the vision of the 21st century as the dawn of the American century now seems a distant, naive dream. The end of the Cold War was supposed to herald a new era of peace and prosperity. But how wrong we were. The resurgence of the Soviet Union has shattered that illusion. The House and Senate are more divided than ever, making it nearly impossible to reach consensus on anything, let alone a foreign policy. As the representatives bicker and complain over what's, what's what and who's who, our relations with allies and adversaries, adversaries alike are taking a toll. Now the Soviet Union aggressively reclaimed the former Warsaw Pact countries and the Russian bear attempts to expand its domain once more, our agenda is clear. It's not just a matter of national security, it's a, matter, it's a global challenge to the principles of freedom and self-determination. We must fight on and take the victory lap. So we get this better, less stability, more war support. Interesting. Good. Does that give us anything to work with? No. Keep doing a small PR release. Good. North Dakota, Montana, Colorado, Wyoming, New Mexico, and Oklahoma. Well. Okay, so now here we are. We intervene in the Eastern European War. Uh, are we really intervening? Or are we not? Let's not half ass it. No, they tried. Iraqi Kurdistan, huh? A Biara. Sorry, they're out of oil too. Checkpoint security, sure. Oh boy. Well, they all died at the same time. And they're going to come back, too. Ta-da! Road to recovery. How we feel, that sucks. Recession of the Warsaw Pact. Unfortunate. Quite unfortunate. Ah, oh, they're maxed out, I see. Looking better already. Oh, Afghanistan. Fine. Well, Islamic Republic of Iran now. Raccoon Germany, okay. Well then. So, we have general autocrats now. For recovery and wait it out. The Czech issue. The Czech Republic was able to break away from the forced neutrality of the Eastern Europe by joining NATO in 1995. This isn't stop threats, though, from the USSR, with the country still wanting to maintain its hold over its continent. Especially after the rise of Dmitry Yazov, the USSR has expanded their activities in the country, clearly aiming to overthrow the pro-NATO government. We must sure, make sure that the KGB activities are countered and any revolutionary activities are actively suppressed, lest we lose Czechia to the Soviets. Czechia will not fall. We'll see about that. Um. Oh, okay. Czech Republic is here. There must be over 80 Soviet Union support in Czechia for the revolution to succeed. Gain control in the Czech Republic. Or Czech government. Increases by five. Find supportive parties. Invest in friendly parties. Find advertisements. So we just keep an eye on this, which I'll probably lose, but whatever. Zero out of 100. Mm 
wait it out. And of course. As I mentioned before, the left has a myriad of aspirations, all aimed at satisfying the people in the working class, but to do everyone's will, you'll need funds. So, Therefore, the left is at a crossroads, at a new course, that is. He must make his final decision to spread the term dealing with the workers or standard living with the population. What is this? To serve the population. The left has made a decision. The people are worth more than anything else, and in any case, the workers are part of the population themselves, and this plan will benefit everyone. Now, the general left will be much more committed to improving the live, living conditions of the population, as will involve various large and small reforms, as the most desired by the left, of free health care, or adhere to the working class. The government has decided which plan to choose in order to instigate their second term. And the final decision was made in favor of the working class, one of the most important classes that support a gigantic economy. As I mentioned before, the government will focus on the welfare of the workers, and will do our best to meet with them and their demands. It's a way to finally thank this class. The majority of the benefits they'll have are better wages, strikes, trade unions with more benefits, and so on. Better wages I like. Strikes not so much. Trade unions with more benefits? Bread and roses. Well, you know what? I think I might just go with healthcare because you know what? Donald Trump passing the Universal Healthcare Act just sounds perfect to me. That sucks. Come on, stop doing that. Bomb the caves. Bomb them harder. Bomb, 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 bomb. That's fine. Oh, there are five. Massive protests in Germany. Oh, yeah. Gain control and check government. Yeah. Wait it out. Okay, so we no longer suffer the supply chain issues. Great. Boeing planes? Yes. Raytheon? Yes. Should have bought more or invested more in their stock, but you know what? Whatever. Good. Got a lot of intelligence. Tons of them in the field. And with most of them in the air. Most in the land force, but we have 15,000 in the air force. Reserve manpower is 460,000. Substandard conditions, but whatever. We have one person here. Like, no political power. But we're not losing stability, we're not losing political power. For now, at least. For now. Five, not good. We need more political power. Because <coughs> I'm sure the Soviets are just going to ramp things up, you know? Of course, we need more political power here, too. Oy. Because Oman is in substandard condition. It's fine, whatever. Of course. You know, we're going to serve the people. This doesn't just help the working class. This helps literally all classes. Fifteen is not good. Implement universal health care. Finally, one of the greatest medical reforms in American history is about to finally be passed by our government. That is universal health care. Goodbye to life insurance, goodbye to paperwork, goodbye to the private medical offices in unacceptable QE times. With universal medical medical care, every citizen and non citizen in the USA will be able to have medicines, treatments, and everything they need for new and good recovery. God bless your health care. Rotary drilling, nice. Drill, 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 drill. As much as I want to do that one, I'll save up for at least 15 here, maybe 75. Fun advertisements. Nice. Has a lot of people in Lebanon. Uh, did you win? Islamic Republic of Syria. Oh, you're fighting all of them. Well, Lebanon is trying. There's probably no one garrisoning any of that there. It's becoming costly, okay. Let's bomb them harder. It's 
Sure the people's good. Implement universal health care. Yes, please. A humble eagle. <coughs> it must be admitted in our country the United States of America has committed horrible crimes over the years for the export of democracy and freedom. The conservative government, for all the times, always attempted to hide and belittle every kind of imperialist or rhetorical action uh, committed by us against other countries that give us a upper hand against the Russians. But now that the left has come to power, the time has come to leave that conservative, imperialist, and interventionist rhetoric. To do this, we'll start by reducing the expedition of peacekeepers in the various military regiments in the more stable regions, maintaining the indispensable in areas of high importance, such as Afghanistan. Besides that, the left government has also prepared a plan to help the population of the majority. Oh, God. Um, if not all the countries which have been attacked by us in the name of democracy. Alright, they're attacking Israel. I think it's time to get involved. Please, can we get involved? Oh, well, wow. they just straight up annex Palestine or integrated Palestine. I think we need help our greatest ally, right? Why is our oil still so bad? Do we not just create like a crap ton of places for this? Um, daily gains, negative. Oh, next. oh, no wonder. Depends on what we're gaining or losing. That's our Israel. Just took over Lebanon. Oh, wait. Islamic Ar Republic of Arabia, huh? This land was made for you and me. Our country, thanks to the left's agendas, has made giant strides, as it always deserves to do, in the way it began in an unofficial manner. The new American dream. If at the beginning of the left government was received with much dissent and a little popularity among conservatives, oh, look at that. Yay. Uh, we can say that now the left is even the most fussy Republican in all the states satisfied. There have been turbulent times with the Czech Republic recently, with many workers in a completely unexpected way, uh, taking, deciding to take part in mass strikes. After several days of negotiations with the workers, the factory is starting to function normally again. Given the conditions of preparation of these strikes, it's rumored that they were organized by the U.S. USSR to regain influence over the Eastern Europe once again, trying to start the Eastern Bloc. If this were really the case, the whole world could see that in reality, the whole bastion of proletarian freedom is not so well organized or free, if its own supporters turn against it. Congratulations to the Czech government. Yay. Now we can spend our political powers back on Afghanistan, because god dang it, I want to make sure we do this right. Night raids. Send the Afghan forces. I guess. And from here on out, I do want to start just getting passing more acts too, so. This land was made for you and me. Oh, the Great Middle Eastern War. Whoops. Oopsie. Uh, the fires of war reached the Middle East once more. The conflict and great powers of the peninsula now are at war with each other. Compared to the many early wars, however, this is. Oh, look at that. Um, an all out war of annihilation, only one side can come out on top. Thankfully, we have an ally, Saudi Arabia. Oh, whoops. To get support to it successful, we can have the entire peninsula under friendly new regime. Whoopsie. Well, once bus bustling gas stations, previously seen attention along the lines, now stood calm under the afternoon sun. Emily filled her tank with a sense of relief, noting the state press that had held for the past few months. Finally, some consistency, she muttered to herself. Well, that's good. My bad. I should have done that one earlier, but I was so focused on getting everything else done. So, my bad. Real realsies. We're just having too much fun. I still have uh, Olivia to do as well. Boop, 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 boop. Okay, whatever. Deal with OPEC. Oh, we even got rid of the, op the oil shortage too. Oh, look at that. Import, impose fuel rationing. Nationwide, our stability will go down. So if you don't know about these, please go ahead. Boop. 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 Operation Desert Phantom. Calling our European allies. Well, and honestly, too, I guess, you know, Donald Trump here, he didn't try to get us into any new wars, I guess. 
At least we're uh, you know, tempted to do less of that, but... Uh, fortify the border with China. China has been defeated in the Great Asian War and lost one of its long-standing allies, North Korea. Because of this, China isn't really keen on doing diplomacy with the nation to supply their enemies. To defend the recently unified Korea will enforce the border with China, so if China decides to time for round two, they won't even break through Korea. So, yeah, we didn't get involved in the Middle East with Donald Trump, I think, did we? We might have. I don't think we did. Got involved in India. Got involved in uh, Korea. But that was bound to happen, you know? Oh, there goes Finland. <coughs> yeah, these guys are looking pretty good there. Bomb them harder. Reconstruction aid? Our allies and enemies were highly devastated by the war and... Oh, look at that, yay. Uh, look forward to less lending, lending a hand in the rebellion efforts. We're obliged to give them as much aid as possible, and that's what they need the most, and we won't disappoint. After we're done there, Korea, Japan, and Taiwan shall be happy and prosperous, and thankful, of course, for us watching over them. And reinforce EATO. The East Asia Treaty Organization, or EATO for short, is an organization was created by Japan, Taiwan, and South Korea when they wanted, went to war against the North Koreans, and China, and the alliance was close, or the goal was to keep them really close together and whatnot. Oh, look at that. To keep them good odds for years to come, the wise choice would be to help strengthen this alliance so it stays intact, of course. A little out of time, but that's alright. Oh my god, can we stop with this renewed Taliban offensive crap? Uh, let's see, the fires of conflict blaze across the Middle East, and it's our duty to extinguish them and support our allies in the towns of need. Uh, but covertly aiding their resistance against oppressive regimes, we reaffirm our commitment to freedom and justice, ensuring that democracy and stability prevail where tyranny seeks to take root. Through Operation Desert Phantom, we will train, rearm, and support those who fight for a better future, demonstrating the unwavering resolve and resourcefulness of the American spirit. Increase rebel personnel by 500. Provide training to local rebel groups to strengthen their fight against the UAR and Iraqi forces. So that's supply depots. So great. Supply depots ensure a steady flow of weapons, communications, gear, and materials to uh, our rebel personnel. Well, we don't need that now, do we? Whoopsie. What is this? Swedish delegates have now presented a resolution to admission of Sweden to the North Atlantic Council. Nah. This is so stupid. I need a gigantic amount of political power to just start doing all that stuff too. Just so we can get more forces here and whatnot. Or just kill everybody in Afghanistan. I mean, that could also work as well. How many do we have? They're unf oh god, they're unfriendly too. Are you kidding me? Um, honestly, if they're both unfriendly, at this point we're not going to go with the Republicans anymore. We're going to get Democrats to support us. So what's going on here? Disband the Japanese army. The Japanese armed forces oh, look at that. Yay. have been built up into actual fighting force, larger thanks to us. But now, since hostilities have ceased between the two warring alliances, the Japanese army isn't needed anymore in its overly large capacity. Help them demobilize and such. <coughs> Limit army, Japan army exp uh, expansion, which would probably be the smartest thing to do. The Japanese army has grown too big for a liking, and while it was entirely necessary during the war, it shouldn't grow further from its already big size. We'll limit the expansion of their army so that their armed forces are only capable of defending Japan and not attacking anybody. At the very least, I think that's probably the one to do. Because you never know what could happen next. Soviet invasion of Yugoslavia, oh boy. Can't see any Oh, you're not even unified here. Well, I'm glad these guys split away. Can you imagine if Yugoslavia was actually able to like hold them? Oh crap, never mind. Yeah, not with that happening. Uh. Oh, come on. I mean, they, they should be. Okay, midterm reserves. Oh, we gained 10 seats. Look at that. And eight more seats in the House. The Democrats lost seven in the House. Or seven in the Senate. Wow. And four in the House. And we gained. The Republicans lost three in the Senate and lost four in the Senate. Holy crap. That sort of doesn't help us out. But that does put us in a better position. A medical mirror. Wait, what? What happened to healthcare? 
Do we do it yet? Uh. Wait, I wanted Donald Trump to pass universal health care. What the heck? Do, we, do I guess medical marijuana first and then health care? SFR Yugoslavia. Oh. Well, they're going to get all of Yugoslavia back anyways, huh? More resource efficiency can would be good. Forgot about the midterms. My bad. Interesting. The Balkan People's Republic. Now, I've not seen that one yet. Josip Joska Broz, huh? Iraqi payments. Public compensation, huh? Well then. I mean, the Afghan army should be able to handle it now. Afghan national police is still zero. That part's going up and down all the time. But at least it doesn't matter, because I forgot about it. Whoops. We're just bombing the caves. This land was made for you and me. Ladies and gentlemen, I officially welcome you to the new America. And America, peace. Uh, freedom and justice, or as the French friends from Louisiana, from the Ile de France itself would say, liberty, egalité, et fraternity. Our country thanks to lots of generals have made giant strides, as always it deserves to do, and the way began in an unofficial manner. The new American dream, if at the beginning the left government was received with the much dissent and little popularity among conservatives, we can now say that the left has even had the most fussy Republican in all the states satisfied. We revolutionized a country with an agenda aimed mainly at the satisfaction of the people and the workers, and today, after a myriad of reforms, they spent on their desk full of paperwork, various curses for the incompetence of the secretaries we have reached today. To the previously mentioned new America was built by skilled statesmen for the people and again. That said, many of the states always prosper under the principle of democracy and left by our founding fathers. May the justice of the Constitution always triumph and may God bless America. The Reform Party of USA, led by the left-wing factions, achieved what many Americans thought to be impossible in dreams just a few years ago. Thank you for playing the United States of America's debut content in Red Desk. Interesting. So that's them. This is a giant frickin' mess, but that's normal. It's Afghanistan. Um, I would really want to see, though, if we can get mar medical marijuana passed um, and see if that's universal health that can be passed after that. So we've all this stuff we're gonna do here too, because we're locked out of everything else pretty much, which is fine. South African or oh, Saddam the madman. Saddam Hussein's been the ruler of Iraq for quite some time. Many of every acts have been committed under his regime. Many of them supported by Saddam himself, which you could choose to up openly oppose his regime or use him as a potential tool on restoring order at least some parts of the unruly East. I just don't like that we don't have any political power gain. Like this is crippling us, un unneededly, in all honesty. Crackpot dictator, legitimate threat. Um, add business as usual. Working with dictators. Saddam is clearly a mad dictator, and we do not wish to associate the U.S. government with that filth. How would the international community react to such a move? We wish to brand that Saddam led Iraq as a threat to the security of the United States of America while commit ourselves to oppose his regime, a new containment policy. If we oppose enough friendly, a good choice of action would be political escalation. From the military and political allies make them feel like they're disconnected from the world of politics and the world as a whole for the criminal government. What are the states of consequences we would consider favorable to our foreign policy, such as rising discontent towards Saddam and its dictatorship? Sure. Shut down Libyan terrorists, yeah. Lib Libyan Erd Jamahiriya. Jamahiriya. Yeah. Well, liberals start a civil war, there's only 9% that are liberal, so... I'm not sure what that's gonna do. Social patriotism. Combine social welfare policies with a strong patriotic and nationalist focus tending toward isolationism. Advanced to promote robust social safety networks. Work protections and government intervention to provide services benefiting ordinary citizens. However, this emphasis on social welfare is intertwined with jingoistic nationalism, putting primacy on asserting national interests over multinational alliances or organizations. Social patriotism 
fuses uh, populist economic policies with patriotic rhetoric that promote an isolationist stance on both domestic issues and foreign affairs. Proponents view providing for the needs of the working class as inseparable from holding national sovereignty, securing borders, and projecting an image of fierce national pride oriented around self-interest rather than international cooperatism. That's like a picture just like Lenin. But anyways, Republic of Lib Libya. Wait, we can't support you in this war. What mother yucker did that like this? Uh, well, that's not really smart. Um, hmm. Business as usual, if only. Uh, well then. So, South Africa never. Did that never explode? Wait, do we. Did you. Did you not explode? Maybe you didn't explode. I forgot to look at these guys. Okay, they didn't explode. First campaign so far in this one. The good old Marines. Oh, the good old Marines. The guys fought Saints' worst beats, overthrew the worst dictators of I don't remember how many countries, and saved the world from Nazi madness in 1945. Since the beginning of their service, they've never let us down a single time, and their example, valor, courage, and discipline that the whole world respects. And we, yes, thanks. We'll pass a small number of reforms that reorganize our beloved boys who defend the stars and strats and banner and to do us honor to work, boys. Expand Marine reserves and sponsor Marine enlistment programs, or quality or quantity. Adapt to new climates. Uh, probably quality over quantity. If you want to buy these two, please go ahead. <coughs> Our soldiers defend the homeland day and night, and night and day, and therefore we cannot simply resort to a thank you for the service as a method of thanks. To then further our swell army by conscripting more and more men. So to thank America's military youth, Marines, recruits, and veterans, the best thing to do would be invest more money in the research and to guarantee our soldiers good quality weapons, vehicles, but also food, drinks, and comfort in the barracks. By doing so, our army will always remain superior to foreigners, and our soldiers will be only be more motivated. The downside is the amount of we have to shell out from the state first, but nothing alone can't fix adapt to new climates. As unfortunate as we know, all over the world people are suffering, and if our soldiers are both to defend and to provide humanitarian aid, once equipped them properly, they cannot help people who are in need, and they suffer from attrition, not climate, or any kind of difficulty that they may suffer in foreign territory. Therefore, we will equip them with the best military vest in order to help them fight the climate and make their lives easier. On top of that, we'll also have to train hard to endure those climates and not only be de totally dependent on one darn piece of equipment, feared and respected. While well, having conducted these small reforms, or rather thanks towards our soldiers, the Marines have returned stronger than before, and even more ready and loyal to serve and defend their homeland properly. Thanks to the implemented plans, the morale of our children is much higher and we'll have everything possible to defend ourselves and those who suffer from exploitative regimes and give freedom to the peoples. Legos Towns. If the Air Force is the Ingalls' wings, it's its fleet is its beak, and then the land army is clearly what is keeping it triumphant over every enemy that tries to hit it, that is its talents. And just like the claws of our eagle, our army, uh, the, more, the more the enemy tries to get closer to its nest, the less chance he has of returning. And so like an eco defends her cubs and instructs them in discipline and taking care of themselves, so does the American land army and special groups, such as the Marines who teach the American youth how to be strong and courageous, as the Lord God has commanded us to be, and our might unsurpassed. And so more days have passed, weeks, months, years, but only one thing can ever change this world, everything around us, which is totally, total American military supremacy. Well, I totally didn't use cons commands, but yeah, uh, we got completely gypped here. Um, we, we should have gotten the option to for universal health care, and I wanted Donald Trump to do that, so I don't, I don't think we got chipped. What the heck? I guess we should have done the economic miracle in the end, so... Should have expanded workers' rights, and should have done bread and roses, so... Um... My bad. I don't know that would have happened. Apparently, though, the Soviet Union decided to go to war with the People's Republic of China. I'm not sure what they did. The Sino Soviet War is here, so... Um, historical conflict of great dimensions since the Second World War has broken out, which these are the protagonists of the two of the greatest world powers, the USSR and the PRC. Well, for many years now, due to the major reforms made by the Chinese government, the relations between the two nations practically abandoned, a war seemed almost impossible to avoid, and unleashed by the Soviet wrath, to forcefully impose itself as a dominant Asian power and establish once and for all the death of the Chinese revisionism by Soviet hand. The world was watching this conflict with shook, shock and terror <clears throat> because of the nuclear power of these two nations. The majority of terror coming from the Asian neighbors, a nation, especially Mongolia, finding itself between the bear and the dragon. The end is night. Well, that sucks for you, Mongolia. Um, but yeah, not really much we can do except watching like the Soviet Union kind of just demolishing them. You think China would be a little stronger? Oh wait, are you fighting? Oh, you're on the same side. And we're still doing all this stuff. Like I'm, I'm very disappointed that we just can't, we can't pass universal health care. My Donald Trump, please, please. <coughs> we couldn't finish a course here either. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. You're not supposed to win in Afghanistan, I guess. Uh, I kind of want to see what happens, though. 
Cause, uh... It's kind of intense. Cause these guys are just dying here. And again, I guess... Yeah. I guess China's following the Soviet Union. Let's see what happens. I'll give it a little bit of time. Uh, Libya is doing okay, but... Now they're not in Tripoli. So... I, we totally weren't supposed to continue meddling in other people's governments, but I forgot about that, so, oh well. China's just falling apart, but that's okay. That's going to make uh, the Soviets extremely strong then. As we improve our guided shells, because we're going to need to blow up a lot of people, especially the Soviet Union is literally going to become a dominant power in the world with China helping them out, so. God dang it. This whole Afghanistan thing, I don't think it was a good idea in the end. That's Korea's unified. It's fine, whatever. But you know what? Donald Trump did pass the medical marijuana usage ask. So. Beijing's taking over. Oh, are they fighting down here? CVM. Oh. What's going on down here? CV, CPV Emergency Committee is a coalition for free Vietnam versus Viet oh my god Vietnam is blown up into anarchy okay so most of it, what was Vietnam is just completely nothing but anarchy and now they're based all around Hanoi Vietnamese Civil War more attack less defense and speed you're about to lose and then you have Vietnamese Civil War huh uh, they're taking a while. I do want to see what the results are, but it's taking forever for this. Stealth fighters, sure. Chengdu. Come on. It's been substandard for a long time. They have no national police yet. Please do better. Bomb those caves harder. How many caves do they have left there? Oh my god, this is stupid. Can I just capitulate? How much closer are they to capitulation? Uh, well. Jan's got a couple guys, but they've got so many it's not funny. They're not even close to capitulation. We are 43 minutes away from midnight. Huh. Well, they have so many more divisions. Should just be able to push on through, right? Adapting to climates, getting respected. Come on. Building a lot of nuclear stuff here, which is nice. Hey, this got out of a thing, a deficit of tungsten. That's good. Well, American Armed Forces is looking pretty thick. I like that. Yeah, they're, oh, they're just, they're just moving in through China now. Which means we can't do anything here, which really sucks. Congress, 2007. Make sure it's an election year. You know, the normal stuff. Humble foreign policy, stagnating economy. Yeah. What is this? Oh, oh there's a nuclear bomb. Eagle's Talons. I don't think I can support either side. He looks really unhappy. Well, I would be unhappy too if I was getting invaded. Recent nuclear bomb damage as well. Chemical arsenal. There's a lot of organization. Wow. Cold War. Shining Union. Yeah. Military industry public policing. Well, I can't wait till this gets fixed and like upgraded and updated and whatnot. So, because it'll be interesting to see what we can actually do here. Because my God, we've tried so hard for this. Come on, can you just lose? You're, you lost here, you lost here, you're losing here. Oh, there they go. 
And they nuke it right before they finish. That's hilarious. Chinese Socialist Federative Republic of Councils, Soviet Republic of East Turkestan, Soviet Republic of Tibet, and the Manchuria Soviet Soviet Socialist Republic. Sergei Shoyu. Oh. Shog Shoigu. Look at this guy. Li Langqing. Interesting. So. Now that is one hell of a Warsaw Treaty Organization. So. But I'll end it there. I thoroughly enjoyed this campaign quite a bit. Even though we're not going to do our might, it's fine, whatever. Um, if you enjoyed the campaign, though, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching and have a great Social Democrat Donald Trump rest of your day.